understanding the dizzy and vici abnormalities is very important. I have created a very simplified diagram of the physiology that happens when we have injuries to the different segments and how those lead to their vici or dizzy abnormality. Vici, for those of you that are not familiar, stand with volar intercalated segment instability, while DC stands for dorsal intercalated segment instability. And the way I see it is you're going to see it in relation to a lunate. And for example, let's say you have an injury to one of those attachments. So the scaphoid has an intrinsic pull anteriorly or volarly, and the trichotrum has an intrinsic pull towards the dorsal aspect of the hand. And by that, there you know, some people use the reference of tug of war. So there's a constant tug of war here, but they're keep it, they're kept in check by the different attachments here. In the event that you have a injury to the scaphoid lunate interval, does separate in this two, you're going to see that the scaphoid is going to continue to move unopposed anteriorly, and then the lunate and the trichotrum are going to move posteriorly or dorsal. So in this case, that's what we tend to have the dorsal or the dizzy abnormality. The technical measurement for this is going to be a scaphoid lunate angle as measured from the lateral radiograph is going to be more than more than 60. Um, the capital lunate angle might also be affected, but usually the scaphoid lunate one is a more important one. So by that same analogy, we can move on and see what happens when we're dealing with visi. So with visi, we have an injury from the lunate and the trichotrum, so the lunar trichotral interval. Uh, imagine we have an injury here, so the trichotrum is going to continue to displace dorsally while we have the scaphoid and the lunate that move volar. And that creates a visi instability, which stands for vol volar uh, intercalated segment stability. So by using this type of simplified analogy, you get a better idea of why they're called the way they are. And you can see that it really corresponds to where the lunate is moving. And I don't want to confuse you, but if we go back, let's say we have a scaphoid fracture. In that case, we're going to have part of the scaphoid staying and moving anteriorly. And the other part that's not going to be attached anymore is going to be affected by this dorsal pull. So in that case, we're going to have a dizzy instability.